to the Bloom and Grow YouTube show, Monstera Madness Edition. Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Welcome to my home where my Monsteras have lost their freaking minds. Um, I have three monster. Hello. Hi. Look at that fenestrated leaf, baby. Um, I have three monsters in my apartment right now. Um, one of them was one that I had ordered like off of Amazon um, from Hertz. One is a resuscitation. It's my neighbors that I've been resuscitating. So it actually was like this huge, gorgeous monstera, tons of fenestrated leaves. That's this guy. Um, he had tons of fenestrated leaves. Um, unfortunately, he got really overwatered. So my neighbor gave him to me to resuscitate. I cut probably 80% of the plant back. I actually kind of was thinking that he was going to die. We put them under all of our monsteras are under our Soltech lights, which is why I think they're growing like crazy. I think they're just so happy under the under the full spectrum white light. But um, then the monstera stopped putting forth fenestrated leaves. It only put forth these little baby guys, like what you see in a young monstera. Um, but recently, after uh, probably seven months um, of just TLC, and we do have a moss pole in here as well. He's starting to put out fenestrations again. So you can see, it is funny, um, his leaves are very tall because I think he's growing up towards the light. But it's been really cool to see what he was only putting forth, these little baby leaves, um, to bigger baby leaves with no fenestrations to now a little a little fenestration. So I think it's proof that this plant is is pretty happy. Um, and then the, the super special, monstera that I want to show you. I'm just going to put him over here for a minute. This plant, which is putting off all sorts of growth and has fenestrations, this monstera was the first plant cutting that I ever got from a plant swap. I went to one of Summer Rain Oaks's plant swap. This was a tiny cutting. It had five leaves and all of them very young, not big, uh, not even big like this. But I was so excited. I was still a new plant person and I had gotten this tiny little monstera cutting. I had wanted a monstera. I was really hoping I'd get one. Um, and I got one. So I brought it home and I put it in a pot. Um, I put it in bright and direct light and um, it started growing. So that first leaf was so excited. I mean, it's put off so many leaves and I feel like every time it puts off a leaf, I'm like, oh my God, is this gonna be the first fenestrated one? Like, oh my God, oh my God. The, it put off 10 or 20 that were not fenestrated yet. But what I would actually do, since it was a tiny cutting, and as you can see, this is a much bigger cutting, once it would get tall enough, I would cut it at the node, um, I would stick that in water and let that root, and then I would repot it back into the same pot to make the plant bushier, instead of just being one stem. So now we've got one, two, three, it looks like three stems that have all put off all sorts of leaves. And if you can see at the top, Look at those fenestrations. Wait, where's the big one? There, can you see it? Can you see this guy? Guys, I worked hard for that. <laughs> I've had this plant for almost two years and these are the first fenestrated leaves. So, and we've got tons of aerial roots in here as well. So I feel like these are all good signs. We've got fenestrations, we've got aerial roots. These plants have all grown out of their pot. Um, I'm sorry to report, I mean, I've been traveling for six months, but we've got roots. We've got roots coming out of every single pot. So I'm gonna do an epic Monster of Madness repotting day, and I figured I'd bring you along for my journey. <laughs> Pray for me, plant friends. I've been like stressed about this all week. I've been watching as many Monstera repotting resources as possible. So thank you to Summer Rain Oaks, Plant Arena, and all of the other amazing YouTubers that I've watched that have, um, I've watched them repot their monsters. I'm a little nervous, but we're gonna do it. So a few things that I've learned, these aerial roots, let's, let me show you some of these guys, cause they're, sexy um you can see they put off these huge aerial roots now monsteras are climbing plants so in nature they climb up tree trunks in order to grab the light and their roots absorb water and nutrients so these aerial roots are really important this is what attaches them to the tree so um 
I put moss poles in most of my Monstera containers because I want the aerial roots, number one, the moisture that's released from the moss pole, apparently, um, that I learned from my moss pole episode. I hope you watched my moss pole YouTube video last week where we made this big guy. Uh, aerial roots attached to the moss poles. The moss poles release the moisture and that's going to encourage your plants to make aerial roots and I uh, ideally attach to the moss pole. Now some of them have attached to the moss pole and then these long guys I've just wrapped around and sat in the bottom of the pot and actually what you can see, can you see that? Um, the root has even grown more roots so you can tell that they like sitting on the soil. I talked to my friend Leslie Halleck who's a horticulturist and she said you don't have to put the aerial roots into the soil. Um, you can set them on top of the soil, you can snip them back, you can leave them. I actually think they look kind of cool like just hanging out. Um, you can snip them, you can leave them out, you can put a few in the soil if you want. You can just set them on top of the soil um, and then hope that they will eventually start climbing and attaching to stuff. So here's my plan. Also, this is a very special pot. So since this was my most special cutting, this was a pot sent to me by Hot Dirt Pottery. She makes amazing stuff. It's got an awesome drain hole. So I have to figure out what special plant to put in my special pot next. So my plan is, I'm literally going to pot, so I'm putting this guy, the biggest one, in this enormous pot with uh, my new moss pole that I made because he doesn't have a moss pole. Then I'm gonna put this guy in this pot, which is once one, uh, two inches larger. Then I'm gonna put this guy in this pot. So everybody, we're like frog hopping into all the pots. So, let's get started and say a prayer for me, plant friends. <laughs> okay, ugh, look at this guy. It's better see him against the terracotta. Look at those. So this is my um, most developed Monstera. Obviously, we're gonna start putting in the biggest pot. Um, he's so cool. He's got all of these enormous, I mean, so many aerial roots that I've just been like tucking into the pot or tucking um, onto the top of the soil. I also just did a listener meetup in, um, where was I just, in Chicago, and I was talking to my listeners about repotting, and one of them, all the plant babies is her Instagram handle, also said putting pine bark in your Monstera mix makes them really happy. I unfortunately wasn't able to get them, but that's another hot tip from the Bloom and Grow community. Um, so I am going to use, I love Espoma. I love Espoma. Um, I'm gonna mix their, um, they're all organic, family-owned company. I, I'm obsessed with them. You, if you guys listen to my podcast, you know that. Um, so I'm gonna mix their cactus soil and their potting mix just to give it a little bit more aeration. I also have this random bag of orchid bark <laughs> that's just taking up space in my, under my sink. So I think I might mix some of that in here too. So we'll have a nice, airy um, soil for these plants to thrive. So here we go. Um, I'm scared. I don't want to, I'm scared! Um, okay, so I guess, oh, I just got a new little shovel thing. Hold, please. I just got this fancy trowel is the name for little baby shovel, um, from Virgin and Ball, so I'll use that. All right, so I'm going to make my little mix at the bottom of the pot. We're going to stick my, uh, moss pole in and then get this baby go. I'm gonna try and get this thing out of the pot. Here we go. Oh, that was easy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my plant friend. Look at you, you're so miserable. Um, yeah, I've been traveling for six months and um, I don't think I understood how happy the plants were gonna be under the grow light. And these are big plants. I mean, these plants are enormous in, in nature. So this is a great lesson learned to keep your eye on your plants, but that's okay, we're, we're figuring it out now. So I'm going to try and shake some of the soil 
I have been fertilizing, but we got, we gotta like set these roots free. I need to be put in plant parent jail. Um, <laughs> the roots under here are, it's, it's so root bound. So I am going to work on getting these roots free. We've got to set them free a little bit so when we put them in the new pot, they can actually explore and have the space that they've needed for a while. Um, Maria, you've got a podcast about houseplants and you're letting your roots grow crazy like this. But you know what? I've been, I've been traveling. And listen, plant, plant friends, we're blooming and growing over here. We're all learning. So yeah, do you see? The more I kind of shimmy this free, the more the roots are like becoming more vertical. These are resilient plants, so I'm gonna shake these guys free. We'll fast forward and I'll come back to you when we're ready to pop this sucker up. Yeah, baby. make some more of my like custom mix, put it here, backfill it, and get this guy in his new home. Um, because he's kind of tight together, I'm gonna actually pop the plant up and then stick the moss pole in. I think that's the plan. to do is he kind of has like a little bit of an elbow here like he grew out and then up so I want to either find a place for him to sit in the soil so these uh, he can kind of root into the soil or figure out how I can attach him to the moss pole because there's like some aerial roots growing over here so let's see what we can do for him going to stick this in there get it nice oh that worked perfectly shimmied it right next kind of in the center of the root ball and now I'm going to work to um, attach some of these with um, I have twisty ties somewhere so ideally the aerial roots will start to kind of attach themselves to the moss pole but to get them started you can take a little twisty tie and give it a little nudge. Um, I'm also going to take these aerial roots that aren't in the soil and maybe kind of wrap them, leave them on top of the on top of the soil. I'm not tucking them into the soil, but kind of maybe I don't know. I'm curious to see if I leave them near the moss pole or maybe wrap them around the moss pole if if they would attach. I don't know. Let's maybe do an experiment and learn. Monstera number one is repotted. These guys will kind of settle. I'm gonna give him a good water and move on to Monstera number two. I'm gonna rinse the pot that this guy was in and pot up the next Monstera into that. All right, so now number two, uh, Monstera number two already has a moss pole. Uh, the moss pole is too short, so I'm actually going to go in and make um, so I made this moss pole on an old tomato steak, which is metal and it actually has connectors. So I'm gonna make another moss pole and heighten it, but uh, I don't need to show that on the camera. So, okay, let's see. Let's see what the damage is done here. Come on, little guy. All right, <laughs> yep. So he also really needed to be repotted. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend, but you're gonna get a new home and you're gonna love it. So same thing, I'm going to shake off the soil um, 
free these roots a little bit and uh, get him some new soil in a slightly bigger home, which I'm sure he's going to be very happy about. And from what I've learned in my research, um, if you do end up like when something is pot bound, if you're kind of getting in there to free up the roots, yes, it's gonna stress them to break them a little bit, but it will actually instigate growth from my understanding, from what I've learned. So I think the most important thing, my priority is getting these roots out of the like crazy concentric circles that they're growing in, freeing them up so they can take advantage of the new space that they're gonna have. Um, this was an aerial root that actually worked its way into the soil by itself. I did not tuck it in. It was an aerial root that grew out of the Monstera and it grew all the way into the soil. Look how deep it grew and look at all the juicy roots. So that goes to show that these plants gonna, are gonna have a mind of their own. watered some uh, because of the moss pole these aerial roots are actually all kind of already towards the moss pole um, so yeah I'm really happy with how that turned out so that was easy so welcome to your new home I hope you grow and are much happier and I'm so sorry it took me this long to repot you next up look at this guy look how long this aerial root is you're such a wackadoo! All right. Next up is we're putting this, uh, my, my plant swap cutting turned fully fenestrated Monstera into a bigger house. in the soil oh my god that must have been I don't know how that was in there oh I feel the moss I'm try I'm feeling something and I'm like what the hell is this it's the um moss pole actually okay so we're not dealing with too many crazy roots um yeah you're doing fine little buddy okay cool so we're gonna take I think I'm gonna try tucking this one in since the other guys were uh you can see several aerial roots that totally weaseled their way into the soil. That's so cool. I didn't really realize they had done that just from the surface. Um, so I'll tuck this long guy in and then I'm gonna leave everybody else out because this also has a moss pole. I'm also gonna make an extension for this one. Um, and yeah, let's get started. already started tying to the um it's really amazing I had tied this to the moss pole and it was wet and you can really see the aerial roots that grow around it and wrap around it it's so cool I can't suggest making a moss pole enough so my three monsteras now have homes um check your monsteras <laughs> Check your plants, check the holes. Um, I'm trying not to be too hard on myself because I have been traveling for six months and I just haven't been home to be able to do this. But I'm happy that everybody has a new home now. Their roots have space to bloom, not bloom, but to grow. Um, and I can't wait to see how big these guys get. I'm ready for some monsters. I'm ready for some really big plants. So I'm super excited to see how it goes. I hope this was helpful. If you end up repotting your little monsters or if you end up using moss poles on them, please let me know in the comments if you have questions, if you have requests for other uh, Bloom and Grow YouTube show videos you'd like to see. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. Bloom and Grow.